Okay, the point of this video is to show how we can represent, we introduced the idea of parametric equations and how to represent, uh, how to represent uh, uh, lines in three space using Cartesian equations. So we, let's start off with an equation, a regular line, r equal, is equal to one, two, plus three, four, t. Remember, we're in the vector world now. So this, you know, this could have been originally, this could have been the line. Remember, here's a point on the line, and this is the slope of the line. So this technically is, you know, y minus 2 is equal to um, 4 over 3 x minus 1. I want you to think about that, how the equation of this, this line, this line of point slope is this line in vector form. Anyway, so actually, let's get from here to there. So the first thing we know is that this, this, both these lines take us to a bunch of points. This takes us to an x and y. This also takes like takes the vector to the x y. So we can say that x is equal to one plus three t, and we can say that y is equal to two plus four t. These are known as parametric equations. And t is the t lambda mu. This is a parameter. And what's really interesting, and if you think about it, for your entire career, math career, we've been telling you that y depends on x. We've been telling you that y is a function of x. Well, now we've made a change. Now x and y are a function of t. That means, and t is time. So now, if you think about it, this really applies to like your physics or your biology or something like that. No longer do we say, where is y at, at every x value? We can now say, where is our location at time t? Where is the x value and the y value at time t? And this is a leap. We're not gonna really focus on majorly, but this takes it up to the next level. This is like your multi-dimensional. The, the idea of you know, uh, you know, a, a function you know with two variables or or yeah, exactly. You see, like you can yeah, that's the idea that the that the location depends on the time. So let's back off that. Let's get back to the algebra. So you we created parametric equations, and so we can, the idea is. This can help us go back to the Cartesian. So we can solve for t. So we say x minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to t. And we could also say that y minus 2 over 4 is equal to t. Well, if they're both equal to t, set them equal to each other, x minus 1 over 3 equals y minus 2 over 4. And this is... Uh, you know, obviously I can manipulate this. Yeah, I can manipulate this, multiply by four, and I get this equation. But I'm going to leave this because this is the equation of a line in Cartesian space. But you're noticing, hey, you know what? This one and two, that was the point that the line passed through. And the three and four, this represented the direction vector. So this is the direction vector, and this is a point. Now, this is kind of interesting because now, now we have a way of representing vector equations in three space in Cartesian equations. It's gonna look a little weird. So let's do the next example. Uh, how about we come up with a line? Five, three, one, plus eight, seven, six, k. So first of all, what are the parametric, let me get an eraser, sorry. What are the parametric equations? What are the parametric equations for this line in three space? Well, in two space it was x, y. In three space it was x, y, z. So now we have three variables whose location depends on the time or the parameter. Um, so let's see, we have x, sorry. 
x equals 5 plus 8t. And once again, this is a parameter. And notice, I make my t different than my plus. For you science people, be very careful that you're distinguishing a t and a plus. So you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to change this to s. So we have x plus 8s. Y is equal to 3 plus 7s, and z is equal to uh, 1 plus 6s. Well, I need to get rid of that parameter. I'm no longer in vector space. I want to represent this line in Cartesian space. So let's solve for the three of these. Um, solve for s. So we have x minus 5 over 8 equals s. We know that y minus 3 over 7 equals s, and z minus 1 over 6 equals s. Set them equal to each other. x minus 5 equals 8 equals y minus 3 equals 7 equals z minus 1 over 6. This is the equation of that line in Cartesian space. It looks a little weird, but we're now doing advanced math, so this is what it looks like. So when you see this, whether you're looking at ID questions or looking at the book, this is the equation of a line in three space. But so let's just make it clear, when you have the equation in this form, you have the point it passes through. Now like the circle or like the line, this minus stuff, it's, it carries over to here also. So this is the point a point on the line, and once again, the 8, 7, 6, this is the direction vector. So we can immediately go from um, the vector equation to a Cartesian equation. Um, so you have to be able to recognize it, but the idea is, yeah, so I have the nice positive numbers. Let's, let's, just, uh, let's just go over some like interesting flukes that you might see these equations because you want to get it back once you get it back to vector space it, it just makes your life a little easier so let's see we saw a line here's example one we, oh this this was example one let's look at another example so i give you the line x minus two over five is equal to three minus y over two is equal to three z plus one over four. Now you look at that, you know, when someone says, what's, what is a point it passes through? What's a, direct a direction vector? And you're looking at it and you're like, well, I know it's a line in three space, but uh, it doesn't look, it's kind of weird. So I gotta do a little algebraic manipulation. Well, this first x minus two is fine. So we kind of know, I'll take it off to the side. I kind of know the first thing is two plus five, something. Uh, let's call that mu. Okay. What's going on here? This is a little weird, but well, you know what? Remember, if I if I flip a, a subtraction around, I have to bring that negative out. It's like pulling a negative number out. For example, 3 minus y is equal to negative y minus 3. Well, I want that y minus 3, so that negative has to come down. I'm erasing that. Okay, so now we're good. So we have the next point, the y value is three, the direction vector, negative two. What's going on over there? Well, it, all, it also kind of looks what I need. I gotta do another manipulation. I need z plus something or minus something. Actually, so we have two issues here because there's a plus there. That's not a big deal, and that three is there. Well, you know what? Let's pull, pull, let's pull out the three. over four. Now, the problem is that three, there, there shouldn't be anything up there. Well, you know what? If I'm multiplying by three, you know what? Let me just, so three is equal to one over a third, right? So that three becomes a third. Once again, one divided by a third is like three, so I can stick the three down there. Please remember that. So now I'm good. I have my z point is negative one third. 
just like the parabola, just like that. The whole, it, it's a transformation. This is a shift to the left. And then what's going on here? Four thirds? Well, four thirds. Now, I think an exercise in the book is that they ask for like integer numbers. Well, we know. How do we get rid of that three? Um, if they want integer values, you can just multiply by three. So it becomes uh, 15, negative six, four. Why do they ask for that? Because fractions suck sometimes. So it can't hurt and it's still parallel and it's still in the same direction. So we're good to go. So this is one thing. Let's do one more example. Uh, with, with some, there's some little tricks in there that you might not, you might be like, how do we deal with this? Let's see, the next example one I want to look at is um, x equals two, y over six equals z plus one over four. So you look at that and you're like, is that the equation of a line? Well, yeah, it is. We have an x, a y, and a z. Um, and uh, yeah, they're equal to, they're all equal to, to each other or, and so, so this is something else you might say. So let's think about this for a second. What's going on with the x? Well, it's always two. So you say, well, does that mean it never changes? Yeah, that means it's x equals two plus zero t. Now, I don't want to write this. It's not proper, but yeah, that's, that's really not correct. But there's other, you can still represent the idea that there's no change simply with zero in the x value, the, the direction vector. So let's create another one, let's call it, I don't know, let's call it s. Well, let's call it r, because we're gonna r equals two plus zero lambda, right? Because x isn't changing, it's always two. It's always, and, and that, you're like, okay. What's going on with y? Well, we know that the, the denominator is six. What's going on here? Well, remember, we could technically write this as y minus zero. So it's starting at zero. That's okay, it's a point. What's going on over there? Well, this is not really difficult. If, then we know the direction of the vector is four, but this one, remember, plus one, negative minus one. So these are little things. Uh, other things in the homework you might see, they, they might ask you a point on the z-axis. Um, a point on the z-axis. Uh, what is a point on the z-axis? Zero, zero, z. Like when I say, what's the y-intercept? You're like, oh, zero, b. What's a point, what's, what's a, the, uh, what's a point that's a root? You go, oh, like x, zero. Uh, same idea. What's a point on the x, y plane? So remember, the way I described 3D is like the floor is the x, y plane, and like the height is the z plane. Well, what is a point in three dimensions on the x, y plane? Um, it's x, y, zero. That'll help you. Good luck with the homework.